When you own a sporting camp deep in the Maine woods, there's no telling who might drop in for a visit. And Gloria came over to the kitchen one day, and at that point we had a big screen door on our front um, on our front door, and that was completely mangled. <laughs> and she said, oh. And so she opened the screen door, heard the bear go out through the front window, uh, the- <laughs> which, which luckily was open, so he just went through the screen. This is Bob Duchesne's Wild Maine. In early July, I made a spin through the upper reaches of Arusta County, spending some time at three different sporting camps. The one we visit on this show is simply amazing. Red River Camps is one of the best-sided sporting camps anywhere because it's right in the middle of Dabooli Public Reserve lands. If you went any further north, you'd cross the Allagash, cross the St. John River, and you'd be in Canada. Red River Camps is on the shore of an excellent trout pond, and it's within quick walking distance of many other ponds that contain some of the state's best fishing for brook trout and arctic char. It's run by Jen Brophy, whose family bought the camp when she was just a year old. Today we're getting a private tour. Best of all, I can cross this off my bucket list because I've wanted to go up there for years. Bob Duchesne's Wild Maine is brought to you by Hammond Lumber, Dysarts, EBS, and Supercuts in Bangor, Brewer, and Old Town. I first met Jen Brophy on December 13th, 2012. It was a meeting of the Maine Sporting Camp Owners Association, which frankly barely existed at the time. Soon after, Jen took over as president. It was the first I had ever heard of Red River Camps, and I'm a sucker for sporting camps. I decided right then and there that I was going to go visit. But it took me two and a half more years before I got around to it. I ran into Jen again at this year's Eastern Maine Sportsman Show, and secretly I knew that this would be the summer I would finally squeeze out enough time to get up to Dabooli. On July 9th, I checked the spare tire, topped off the gas tank, hit the logging roads north of Ashland, and arrived about mid-morning. Now, I'll do my best to describe to you what I'm seeing, but I've actually posted a video onto the 92.9theticket.com website, so you can actually see what I'm talking about. The first thing I see as I pull up, a very attractive main lodge in the edge of a perfect trout pond. Most of the cabins are a little bit up a hill or around the corner along the water's edge. There are canoes everywhere. Let's get started. Jim Brophy, welcome to Bob Duchesne's Wild Maine. Why, thank you. I'm at Red River Camps, uh, which you're now running. Your parents used to run it. Yes, that's okay. correct. They bought it from the previous owners in 79. So 1979, were you just a child up here when that was oh, going on? Oh, yes. <laughs> I spent my first birthday here. Is that right? Yep. So you grew up right here. I did. Okay. And then you've gone off to do other things. I have. And came back. So what were the other things you did before you came back to run Red River Camps? I Let's see. I started... Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone I, has a colorful story. Oh, they do. <laughs> I started by going to the magnet school, the mm-hmm. um, main school of science and math for my last two years of high school. Mm-hmm. And then after that, that shot me into a college career in engineering at Virginia Tech mm-hmm. in civil engineering. After that, I moved to New York State, did a little bit of engineering for a while, went to grad school at Cornell. Mm-hmm. I majored in uh, biological and environmental engineering, mm-hmm. and then I went to Washington, D.C. for about 10 years to do stream and wetland restoration. Okay. So when you came back to Red River Camps, is it because you wanted to or because you had to? <laughs> <laughs> I knew when I was a child I was going to come back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, back in 1946, my grandfather brought some camps in uh, in New Hampshire, mm-hmm. and uh, my mother still lives there. So, nice. <laughs> yeah, and she's 86 years old now. So, uh, sometimes the uh, acorn doesn't fall too far from the tree. No. <laughs> All right, we're standing in the kitchen right now. You cook for your guests. We do. And you have Gloria, who cooks for everybody, or do you yep. do the cooking too? Uh, We tag team a little bit. Mm -hmm. She does most of it. I like doing desserts and Mm -hmm. all the fun stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Typically, what would you be serving? Do you have a full menu to offer? Do you have planned evening meals? We have planned evening meals. We do everything Mm -hmm. family style. So tonight, for instance, we are having baked haddock with a white wine sauce. (laughs) And don't tell anybody we're doing a birthday cake tonight for one of our guests. Uh Um, We're also doing, let's see, we've got roasted asparagus that goes with that, and we'll probably do a cornbread or biscuits Mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. Well, I mean, I walk right in the door, and I come in the kitchen door, and there's powder. I mean, there's there's flour (laughs) right there on the counter where bread is being made right here. Indeed it is. Well, I I have to ask you, how long does it take you to go buy a quart of milk? Um, 
it depends on exactly where we want to go. We can get some groceries in Fort Kent, which is an hour away. Mm-hmm. If we need anything bigger than you know milk and eggs and things like that, we have to go to Prescott, which is about an hour and 45 minutes. Mm, yeah. So really, you got to stock up. <laughs> oh, you do. And you do not want to forget anything. No, you don't. So do you have a freezer somewhere? Or we do. We have a big okay. chest freezer. All right. Um, typically, how many guests can you handle at one time? We can handle up to about 45. Mm-hmm. It gets really busy yeah. up that far. <laughs> <laughs> but it does. <laughs> Do you have somebody helping you? I mean, besides Gloria? Or... Me and Gloria. Oh, my yeah. word. Then we have Jim who comes in and does yeah. some of the carpentry and mows the lawns and things uh-huh. like that. And... Yeah. I have to tell you, you're starting to sound insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't deny it if the shoe fits. <laughs> yeah. Now, is this, this is just seasonal. You don't operate in the winter. Okay. Yep. We open up in May as soon as I can get in over the road. Mm-hmm. And we close down at the end of October. And were you able to get in in May? I was. Actually, this really? year, the snow melted really fast. Huh. It was a bizarrely cold winter. With lots of snow, at least down where I you was. You guys had a lot of snow. We it, had average snow. Yeah. We did not have a lot of snow, but it, it went when it started going. Mm-hmm. It went. Yeah. I actually got in earlier than I expected. Well, it's going to get easier now because they've been cutting all the brush along the side of the road, so that yeah, should melt it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of you on the way in saying, that the reason they're doing that is so the road can thaw out faster in the spring. Yes. Yeah. And because they're going to cut in here next year. Are they? Yeah. yeah. That, I think that's the plan. Yeah. Uh, this is state land right in here? Yes. We're in 21,000 acres of state-owned land mm-hmm. um, in the Du Bois Township, but everything around us is owned by the logging companies. Yeah. Irving, mostly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, let's take a look in the lodge area here. All right. Yeah. And you can just tell me what it is I'm looking at. Why don't you start with the fact that this is a new building, not because you planned it that way. Sure. <laughs> what happened? We are standing in a brand new lodge we built in 2009, because in 2008, rate... Boy, the week that my dad and Gloria came in to open up, mm-hmm. the lodge got struck by lightning. Mm. Gloria was the only one here at that point, and she had gone down to make a phone call in one of the only places we can get cell reception. And she came back up during the middle of a huge thunderstorm, and at that point, there was nothing she could do. Mm. You're a long way from a fire department. We are. <laughs> and at certain times, they have a helicopter that can come in. Yeah. At that was not one of those times. No. <laughs> it probably wouldn't have done that much good anyway. No, the fire it, gets going. Do, it doesn't. Yeah. So did you have to just start from the basement again? And uh, Well, there's no basement. Well, I, yeah. We, we actually whatever. have permafrost under here. Or we used to. <laughs> and so we started with a, a nice gravel pad and we put some concrete down on it. Mm-hmm. And from the ground up, I designed it. My dad and a couple of his friends did the log work. We had some great carpenters come in from Ashland and... Mm-hmm. It was a labor of love. And, of course, all the decorations have to be brand new, too, because they would have gone up in smoke. So They did, and that was actually the worst part. Losing the building was not a problem. Yeah. I mean, it was held together with duct tape and hope. <laughs> um, <laughs> but losing everything inside, yeah. that, that hurt well, a lot. And, again, it's the stuff you grew up with. It's the stuff I grew up yeah. with, but it's also historic artifacts. We had a spear from the 1400s that somebody pulled out of the pond several years ago. Um, we had... Boy, we had mounts from back in the 60s. We mm-hmm. had log books all the way from 1920. Mm-hmm. So all of that was, was very tough to lose. One of the few things that we do have, though, is that map up there was actually over in one of the cabins. Oh, okay. So that map was painted in 1949. Mm-hmm. So. And it's a Red River area map, essentially, scale yes. three inches to one mile, and it just depicts this whole Dubuli area. It does, but what's interesting is it depicts a lot of roads that <laughs> yes. no longer exist. <laughs> So I'll have guests come in, and they'll start looking at that map, trying to figure out where they want to go fishing. Uh-huh. And they, they say, oh, we'll just drive up to North Little Black, and it'll be great. And, and I'll come in, and I'll say, no, no, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> now, the remnants of those roads are still perceivable in the woods? They are. They're actually mostly hiking trails now. Yeah, I would think so. And now you have a whole new set of roads that Irving that, put in. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you actually see the state up here, Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry? Do they come in and do much? They do, actually. Yeah. Um, they bring a, a group of young kids, young college kids. Um, mm-hmm. The Maine Conservation Corps comes in every year. Mm-hmm. They either have one crew of six who will come in for about 12 weeks, or this summer they had two groups of six who came in for six weeks. Mm-hmm. And they do a lot of the trail maintenance, building new trails, We actually have about 30 miles of trails around here now, just because of the work they've been doing over the past few years. The lodge is new. I think there must be a law somewhere that every sporting camp lodge has to have animals in the wall, and this one certainly does. But there's art and history and fishing flies in the wall, too, and games and jigsaw puzzles on the table. It's really homey. Decorations, getting back to that subject, you've got Mm -hmm. two... Black bears. Yes. One, that's a bobcat, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Just looking, not if a lynx. If it was lynx. a lynx, I'd be in jail right now. <laughs> <laughs> now you can have a stuffed lynx, can't you? 
Especially I if it I was imported so. from Canada. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know what that lie is. <laughs> All right, we got one deer head in here. We've got f- photos of uh, fishing flies along with uh, a salmon. No, that is a blueback trout. Blueback trout. Oh. That's the Arctic char. You need to tell me about this. I do have to tell you about this. I knew that Arctic char was in the state. I knew it was in this area. I did not know you were surrounded. We are surrounded by one third of the native Arctic char ponds in the state of Maine. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. We have four ponds, Gardner, Dabuli, Pushnir, and Black. All have Arctic char in them. Now, how much fighting goes on about what kind of bait you can use in those ponds? Oh, a lot. A lot. (laughs) (laughs) Most most people do really love to follow the rules. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope they do because this is a... A shrinking population. We've ruined some ponds. Yes. These are really, really special. Yes, they yeah. are. They are a really neat fish. So this is the big rec room. You've got a fireplace, obviously. Yep. Tables for everybody. Uh, jigsaw puzzle set up on the table. Oh yes. Uh, on a rainy day, is this where people come, or are their cabins spacious enough that they just hang up there? It really depends on the group. Mm-hmm. We get a lot of families who come in, and they love to come down here and play charades and play board games and just hang out around the fire. Mm-hmm. We get some couples who would rather just sit up on their porch with their coffee and, mm-hmm. and enjoy the view. Yep. At what point does the black fly population shrink? <laughs> <laughs> or does it? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> we actually, strangely enough, we don't have as many black flies up here as they have in Portage. Is that right? Our black fly and mosquito populations are both smaller than Outtown. Why? Do you, do you have any idea? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> because we're lucky. <laughs> yeah, I guess you are. <laughs> Uh, well, let's step outside in the deck. Sure. And you can tell me about the fishing that goes on, because you're right on a pond that, uh, the name of this pond is? This is Island Pond. Island Pond, okay. Next stop, the deck. So close to the water that you can fish or launch a canoe from it. I'm at Red River Camps, way up in Aroostook County, inside the Dubuli Public Reserve lands. My guest is Jen Brophy, and we talk fishing next, and the age of these camps. That one, as far as we can tell, the history is a little fuzzy, but it was built in 1886. Mm-hmm. It is a 1886? 1886. And it's still standing? It is in the best condition of any cabin here. How did that happen? We have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> this is Bob Duchesne's Wild Main on Sports Radio 92.9 The Ticket. This is Bob Duchesne's Wild Main on Sports Radio 92.9 The Ticket. Jan Brophy had not even reached her first birthday when her parents bought an old sporting camp way up in northern Maine. Once Red River Camps grabs you, they don't let go, especially since the sporting camp is right in the middle of the Dabuli Public Reserve lands, surrounded by incredible fishing. We've just stepped out onto the deck overlooking Island Pond, which is how big? It is 32 acres, Uh and there is a 44-foot deep hole right out there. Mm -hmm. Ten feet from that 44-foot deep hole, it's two inches below the surface. (laughs) <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we have a two to three acre rock pile right out off that point. Was it natural? It is natural. And there's one rock out there we call it the Jesus Rock yeah, because yeah. you can stand on it and it looks just like you're walking across the pond. Has any geologist ever told you how that happened? Have you investigated? There are theories. Yeah? Like what? Right off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> the top I'm, of your head, I'm, you can I'm make it up. I'm trying to remember. I could make it up. <laughs> <laughs> Giants. Yeah, yeah. Giants did it probably. Glue Scap did it. Yes. All right, so we're outside. You've got canoes. These are all your canoes? Yes, they are. Yep, and so people can use them if they rent. Do they have to rent the canoe from you, or can they just use it? No, everything's included with the stay. Okay. Yep. So paddles, life jackets, uh, Paddles, life jackets, jackets, canoes, and kayaks. Mm -hmm. And this pond is fly fishing only? This pond is fly fishing only. Now, is this one of the ones with the Arctic char? No. Okay, because it's not It's a little too shallow. Yeah, okay. Uh, This obviously is the new lodge. That's what, a boathouse? That is a boathouse. That's where I store all the canoes in the winter. Okay, yeah. And there are two black ducks in front of me right now. Yes, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> they seem like they're tame. Uh, pretty much. They're actually, I, we believe they're from a brood that was here two years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really funny. Um, in the wild, black ducks are more shy than mallards, mm-hmm. but they get acclimated to people almost as fast. Oh, so yeah. So they become pets. Well, yes. what's funny is mallards, we have a lot of ma- uh, mallards, mallards mm-hmm. and black ducks, and we found that they really don't like change. Mm. We hosted a wedding here one year. And we had all the decorations out. And wouldn't you know, those mallards would just go back and forth in front of the lodge, squawking, 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 <laughs> until we took all the wedding decorations down. Oh, no <laughs> kidding. Yep. All right. Uh, let's start to look at some of the other buildings. Sure. What is this one? That one looks like it's been here a while. Um, they've actually all been here a while. This is one of the most recent ones, strangely okay. enough. This is Togue. Mm-hmm. It has four bedrooms, a nice big living room, bathroom. All of our cabins have bathrooms. Mm-hmm. This was built in 1956 and 57 by Herschel Curry, um, the owner at the time. Mm-hmm. 
What's the oldest camp on the property? The oldest camp is actually the one that you can't see. It's on the island. Uh huh. That one, as far as we can tell, the history is a little fuzzy, but it was built in 1886. Mm-hmm. It is a 1886. 1886, and it's still standing. It is in the best condition of any cabin here. How did that happen? We have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> Serendipity. What did they make it out of? <laughs> Lots of duct tape and hope. Yeah, really. Even cedar won't last that long. <laughs> no, it, it's in very good condition. Wow. Yep, but it's a two-story cabin. There's a two-story fireplace in it, mm-hmm. and that is just in perfect condition. Mm-hmm. And when it was built back then, it cost $1,500. Jeez. I have a report from one of the wardens in the 20s uh-huh. who made a special side trip just to see Mr. Clark's $1,500 fireplace. No. Yep. Why? And is it still in use? Oh, yes. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I mean, you rent that one out? We do. Yep. Uh, Actually, that gentleman out there is staying on the island right now. Okay. Yep. Wow. How many bedrooms in it? Um, There's one full bedroom, a loft that has four twin beds. There's a Mm -hmm. set of bunks in the main room. It has its own kitchen and its own bathroom. Well, I frankly am astonished. The the A, on an island out there, it would still be in reasonable shape Mm -hmm. that you could actually rent it. Because I've been visiting other sporting camps, and most of them that are that old, there's no sill left. (laughs) (laughs) And it's there mostly for decoration. Well, we do jack it up every year. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. Yep. And this one, uh, as you said, is you know, Brent, uh, the the new lodge is put on a slab now. So yes, and that, that's what we're starting to do to all of them. When we jack them up, we'll put concrete blocks underneath them. Yeah, everybody is. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. when you got a sporting camp that's a hundred years old, you're fighting sawdust. Yes, you are. Yeah. All right, let's look up the hill here. Sure. For instance, looks like they're working on that cabin up there. They are. We're actually rebuilding that cabin. Yep. Tell me about it. Uh, well, this is pushing here. Mm-hmm. Um, this is actually. Let me back up a little bit. Yeah. When Red River was first developed, it was a private camp. Mm -hmm. And so there were two families from Boston, the Whitmans and the Chapmans, and they would bring all of their friends up for six months at a time. Mm -hmm. So they needed all the the amenities. So that cabin that we're rebuilding right now was actually in front of the old (laughs) barbershop. Barbershop? They had a barbershop. The (laughs) building next to it, which you can't see because it's in the woods, was the old wood and metal shop. Uh Um, Up where Denny is was the old horse barn. Okay. And the building that I currently live in was the old schoolhouse. So this was a more settled place back then than it is it, now. It was kind of the town that never was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. In fact, that's probably why this is Dabuli Public Reserve Land, because it was at one time likely to be a public school lot that was set aside by the state. Actually, it, close. It, it was very close. It's. I'm usually happy with close. <laughs> usually I get my facts completely <laughs> wrong, but how close did I get? Well, the Bully Public Reserve land came about because of the unique geology in the area. Okay. Uh, because we are a, a very close-knit chain of lakes, and there's some interesting geology and a lot of rare plants and animals. Mm-hmm. But what the state did is they traded all of those little 1,000-acre right. parcels in 21 other townships for this 21,000 acres. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now the paper companies have use of those 1,000 acres scattered throughout the northern mm-hmm. part of the state, and the state has this. Yeah. So it was, a, it was a trade. Yeah. Well, that much I was familiar <laughs> with. Like, I could have done that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you've got uh, Gal- what is it, Galilee? Yep. Galilee, Denny, Upper Pushineer, Gardner, North and South Little Black, the island, and Togue. Yeah. Cause and I they can't, are I can't, all can't, named after the ponds. Is that, <laughs> yep. Because I can't even see some of them. How many do you have? Nine. Okay. What is your busiest season and why? June is our probably our busiest season because that's when the fishing... Yeah. is really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're, we're typically booked in June. This year, strangely enough, we're booked in July. Mm. We've got a lot of families that have been coming in. And then again in, boy, in the last two weeks of September, mm-hmm. when the temperatures cool off, the water cools <laughs> yeah. off a little bit, the fishing gets good again. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a lot of people come back then. You have a lot of bird hunters in here too at that time? Quite a few. Yeah, not, at, not at that time. In October we do. And how long, and you stay open right till when? Until the end of October, beginning of mm-hmm. November. Okay. Yeah, we don't do deer season anymore because there are very few deer in this township. Yeah. I'm starting to see more than I was for a while. Oh, you and me both. Yeah. But but when you're still excited to see them, (laughs) there still aren't enough to hunt. It's like, look, a deer. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You get many moose hunters in here? Um, A a small number. Yeah. We find that since we don't uh, sell gas... Mm-hmm. People would rather stay out town where they can get gas yeah. so that they can come in and, and mm-hmm. ride the roads and then get back out to where the gas is. So they like to come in this way to hunt, but go back to town to stay. Mm. I was expecting, since there probably isn't a lot of swimming, families coming here to go splash around the oh, water. Oh, there's over. a lot of swimming. Is there really? Oh, yes. Yeah. I grew up swimming here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to guess you weren't going to be that busy, but actually you are. You've got plenty of people here. We do, actually. Yeah. Starting this afternoon, we're using every cabin. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, this is a sporting camp, always has been. Yes. Um, but every sporting camp I'm discovering is somewhat different. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> this one, as I say, this one tends, it looks like it's more family oriented. We're becoming so. Th- yeah, this time yep. of year. And since you have been living here since what, first grade? 
Uh, before that, since before my first you, birthday. Yeah, yep. yeah, okay. Then you've seen changes over time of how this is being used. Oh, certainly. So tell me what the change is. Well, we're getting a lot fewer, definitely a lot fewer deer hunters. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, we're seeing an, oh, how do I say this nicely? So we're seeing an aging population. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my part. <laughs> so what we find is, or what we've been finding is that a lot of the young people now want to come and get away to the woods. Mm-hmm. So when my parents were running it, it was a lot of the older gentlemen, um, a lot of the hunters, a lot of the older fishermen. They would come in in groups of seven, eight, nine, ten mm-hmm. men. Yeah. And now we're seeing a lot of couples. Mm-hmm. We're seeing a lot of families. We're seeing a lot of groups of young guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually hosting a bachelor- bachelorette party <laughs> later on in the summer. So we're seeing a lot of groups of women. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jeez. So it's definitely a changing demographic. Are they coming from all over the eastern United States, or are they coming mostly local? Or I would say 60% from Maine, mm-hmm. another 30% from elsewhere in New England, mostly Massachusetts and Connecticut, mm. and a smattering from elsewhere. We had some folks from Mississippi mm-hmm. earlier this year. We've had some folks from Minnesota, Georgia, South Carolina, mm-hmm. but not an awful lot. Yeah. Is it repeat business? or A lot of it. Yeah. Because finding new customers when you're this remote and nobody knows what to expect can't be easy. It, it's not easy. <laughs> we do a lot on the website. Mm-hmm. Um, I try to post a lot of pictures, a lot of information as to what people should expect. Mm-hmm. We do almost, actually this past year we did every sporting um, sportsman show in the state. I know. That's where we ran into each other last exactly. year. Exactly. <laughs> Easter Maine Sportsman Show. Yep. And that, that does very well for us uh-huh. because we can explain to people what they're getting into or what they're in for when they come. And what really surprised me is there weren't that many sporting camps there. You were kind of a... Very few of them do it, and I I don't know why. (laughs) It it takes a lot of energy. It It really does to stand there for two days and talk to to a thousand people, a mm-hmm. thousand or fifteen hundred people. Yep, it's it's exhausting. Yep. <laughs> so you get fishermen from Lake Ontario doing doing mm-hmm. shows and presentations there, but nobody from our own spo- sporting yep. camp community. Yep. Well, uh, you know, sporting camp is in some regards uh, a diminishing industry in the state, and it is. There used to be, boy, hundreds of them. I think there used to be over four hundred yeah. at mm-hmm. the heyday, and now we've been trying to figure that out mm-hmm. um, through the sporting camp association. I'd say there's probably one hundred and fifty of us left. Mm-hmm. Which is too bad, because as you know, I love them. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. Today, Bob Duchesne's Wild Maine is visiting Red River Camps in Dabouli, way up near the Canadian border. It's true that the number of sporting camps in Maine has gone way down. We don't hunt, fish, or vacation like we used to. But once you get north of Millinocket and west of Portage, there's actually a whole bunch of them concentrated there. Now, what's that do for competition, I wonder? I'll ask Jen Brophy next. This is Sports Radio 92.9, The Ticket. This is Bob Duchesne's Wild Maine. Saturday mornings at 9, Sunday mornings at 8 on Sports Radio 92.9, The Ticket. There used to be hundreds of sporting camps in Maine, but the season is short, the upkeep is expensive, and vacation habits have changed. A week-long vacation in one place used to be normal. Now it's the exception. Modern Americans are too busy, too much on the fly. Hunting and fishing is not as popular as it once was, especially with new generations growing up with Game Boys instead of fly rods. So there is the constant challenge of finding new customers and the additional challenge of making yourself different than the remaining sporting camps that are out there. A lot of those camps are clustered up north. If you get into the woods west of Ashland, you'd never know that we've lost so much of our sporting camp heritage. There seem to be camps all over the place, and somehow you have to be a little different than the one down the road. I am at Red River Camps in Dabouli. Jen Brophy is the owner. So I'll put the question to her. On the drive in here, there were mm-hmm. a lot of different sporting camp opportunities. Uh, in fact, I stayed with one last night. Mm-hmm. So you've got competition in this area, even though there aren't as many sporting camps as there used to be. That's Every- true. Everybody's got to be differentiated a little bit. What do you think is your secret? Oh, goodness. <laughs> I guess I would have to say if we had one tier, it would be the area that we're in. Mm-hmm. We are one of the only sporting camps who has the opportunity to fish in 17 different ponds mm-hmm. within walking distance. Oh. Yeah. Wow. It's nice. <laughs> walking? <laughs> well, what's the longest walk? Well. <laughs> when you say walking distance, are we talking 10 miles? Or? Oh, no, no. <laughs> the farthest pond I would send anybody to, with, which is still within our bailiwick, I would say, is probably a three-minute drive. Mm-hmm. It's about two miles down the road. And then it's about a, a mile and a quarter walk. That's North Pond. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, is, it is the pond 
all of our guests love. Mm-hmm. It is our favorite pond, mm-hmm. hands down. When I look at other sporting camps, most of the cottages are just right along the water's edge. Mm-hmm. You could do that a century ago yes, when you, you built could. it. <laughs> These days, uh, yours is actually somewhat up the hill with a great view of everything. Yep. Every cabin somewhat separated from the others, so there's a little more privacy than some that are all stacked against each other. So, yep. you know, I make that observation that this is a pretty comfortable looking place to stay. Why, thank you. <laughs> we, we like that. Well, and we'll, t- we'll take a walk up and I'll actually show you yeah. the view. When you, when you walk up there, you get a nice view of Whitman Ridge. Okay, yeah. Let's walk up there. Canoes all over the place. Picnic oh, yes. table in front. <laughs> yeah, we keep about a dozen or 13 canoes here on Island Pond mm-hmm. for people to use. We also keep one or two canoes at all the ponds in the area. Yeah. So that people don't have to bring a canoe. They can just take a paddle and a life jacket with them. Mm-hmm. Actually, let's pop over here. We just just got finished with one of these cabins this morning. Looks like you have a little water tank up the top there. We do. We actually, if we stop right here. Yep. Oops. About 100 yards from the boathouse, we have a spring-fed well, Mm -hmm. and this little building in front of us is our pump house. Mm -hmm. So we pump water underneath the pond from the well up to the water tower, Mm -hmm. and then it used to gravity feed down to all the cabins. We started putting in tankless water heaters three years ago, I suppose, Mm -hmm. and so we now have a pressure pump system Mm. um, to get the water down to the cabins (laughs) so that the tankless water heaters work. Uh Uh-huh. Well, that's one of the things you've got to do constantly, even with old camps, is to to do the modernization. Mm -hmm. Did they always have flush toilets here? Ever since I've been here. Yeah. We do actually have two outhouses off in the woods that they mm-hmm. used to use back in the, probably the 50s and the 60s. Yeah. But ever since I've been here, it's been indoor plumbing. Mm-hmm. You are surrounded by yellow-bellied sapsuckers. Yes, we are. Ever since I arrived. They're so loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, about three weeks or four weeks ago, they must have been drumming like crazy. Oh, yes. All right. So going back to the, mm-hmm. the fact that we're getting a lot more couples, we've actually devised a system where we can take all of our twin beds mm-hmm. and turn them into kings. <laughs> so... <laughs> This week, strangely enough, we have four, um, four couples in, mm-hmm. five couples in, um, and we had to turn four of our, our cabins into king cabins. And now, which cabin are we in right now? Uh, this is North Little Black. Okay. So what I'm basically looking at is one bedroom that doubles with a table right here. Uh, it's got its own bathroom and shower. A little screen porch so you can sit out there right overlooking the water. Right over the water. Mm-hmm. And that's about it. Wood stove? Yep. Is that the only heat in here is a wood stove? It is. Excellent. Oh, and the gaslight. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You'd yeah. be surprised. These little cabins, those gas lights heat them up like nothing. Uh, no, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I know they do. <laughs> it's like sometimes in a warm summer night, I see a gas lamp and say, oh, yep. <laughs> I'm glad I brought my flashlight. Yep. And yep. this cabin, we're actually changing out that stove because we find it's too big for this cabin. Mm-hmm. We tell people only put one or two pieces of wood in the stove mm-hmm. just to start the fire off, see how it goes. Ten mm-hmm. minutes later, add another piece. Mm-hmm. They never listen. Within one, within a few minutes, they're opening the windows. Oh, yes. O- it'll be middle of October. It'll be <laughs> snow on the ground, and every window in the camp will be open. <laughs> uh, can we just look on the porch here? Yes, yeah. definitely. Can no CMs get through here? Oh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can get through anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. These are the only two with screened-in porches. Mm-hmm. They all have porches, but these are the only two with screens on yeah. them. Yeah. Okay. So these are two cabins essentially attached to each other, so that's a separate... Yes, they yeah. share a wall. They're mirror images of each other. Mm-hmm. So they don't share any interior space, but they are um, they are connected by a wall. Yeah, so this is Chase 1 and Chase 2. Yep. Okay. Which we're rena- renaming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that looks like propane going in there, and that's only for the gas light, right? Uh, the gas light and the water heater. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. So somebody has to mow all this, and it's all on a hill oh, with yes. obstacles and rocks. I hope you pay them enough. I think so. We can ask him. He's right up here. (laughs) (laughs) What if he says no? (laughs) (laughs) Then there'll be a record of it. (laughs) Okay, so this is the one they're remodeling, redoing. Yes. Do you want to pop in and see what we're doing? Yeah, let's take a look. Because are all the exterior logs the old ones? or No. um, All the exterior logs are brand new. Mm -hmm. And you can tell they're, they're still just rough cut. Yep. And what he's been working on right now is sanding the inside of it all. Yeah. So getting all the, the bark oh, and everything yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is actually going to have a loft. We'll have uh-huh. one or two beds up there. Um, we'll have a little bathroom in the corner over there. A couple beds, a sitting area. Mm-hmm. Yep. Where'd all the logs come from? Ooh, yeah. To ask. They, well, these prefab or were they manufactured? No, no, no. They came, I want to say, from west of Masardis, but don't quote me on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Again, a labor of love. Yeah, it would have to be. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. Well, people say that uh, if you want to make a small fortune... Start with a large fortune. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that is very true in this. In, <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, and, and that's what I find. Everybody's doing this out of labor and love. They, mm-hmm. they just honor the tradition of having sporting camps and these amenities in the woods that yep. people just love. Oh, yes. But they're hard to be 
Yes, financially supporting. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You, you don't get into it to make money. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hence, you're a civil engineer. <laughs> mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah. All right, let's wander over to the other grounds here. Sounds good. Now, everybody these days wants to rough it, but with their amenities. So yes. you got to have Wi-Fi. I, f- I find that we don't actually have to have Wi-Fi. Really? When I when I got back, um, God, I got first. back in I got back in two thousand nine. Mm-hmm. I did a little informal poll, mm-hmm. and about half the people I asked if, if they would like us to have Wi-Fi I said, "Oh yeah, that that'd be nice. That'd mm-hmm. be a good idea." Mm-hmm. The other half were vehemently against it. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Yep. So I find that people actually like to be able to get away. There uh-huh. are so few places you can go nowadays that you're not connected. Yeah. And we'll actually have people come here for a couple of days as mm-hmm. part of a larger. You know, week-long vacation, and they'll tell their employers that, oh no, 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 I won't, I won't have a connection for the entire <laughs> week. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so we're actually an excuse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but there is Wi-Fi on the campus. Yes, I do have, you I do, do have to run a business. Yeah, you do. So I do have a, a connection, and we have an antenna on yeah. the top of my house. Mm-hmm. We connect that to a couple of cell phone boosters, mm-hmm. and that gives us just enough signal <laughs> that we can have phone and, and Wi-Fi. Okay. But by and large, people want to avoid that when they're out here because that's yes. the whole point of coming here. Exactly. I don't know why people go to Bar Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither, but I don't, so. No, I don't. <laughs> this is a long way from Bar Harbor. In fact, we're just a stone's throw from the Canadian border up here in Dabouli. I'm at Red River Camps, and Jen Brophy is showing me around. Jen's going to open up a couple of cabins for me in a moment. But this is a good time to remind you that I videotaped much of this and put it up on the website. So if my descriptions aren't good enough, you can see exactly what I'm talking about at 929theticket.com. Just click on me, man, you'll find it. This is Bob Duchesne's Wild Main on Sports Radio, 929 The Ticket. This is Sports Radio 929 The Ticket with Bob Duchesne's Wild Main. We're way up in the county today, taking a tour of a remote sporting camp in Dabouli. Red River Camps have been around a long time. It's great for quiet vacations away from everything, and it's a favorite among fishermen. But like all sporting camps, they've got to update with the times, while staying true to their remote and rustic characters. As we tour the cabins, there is no electricity, and you don't really need it. Gas lights are there when necessary. Wood stoves if you need it. Hot water showers, absolutely. Comfortable beds, you betcha. Too much furniture? No, no. All of these cabins are being renovated one by one, as Jen Brophy is explaining to me now. And this is Denny. This is one we, that we recently okay. renovated. Mm-hmm. Nice hardwood floors. Yep, we've been going through all of the cabins and putting hardwood floors in and redoing all the ceilings. Yeah. Well, every sporting camp I ever saw when I was the age you were when you started living here had linoleum floors. We did. You did too, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Not in most of the cabins. We had some on the island mm-hmm. and we had it in the lodge. Mm-hmm. But all of the cabins had old, old, old pine floors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which if you've ever tried to sweep a pine floor, they have those <laughs> those quarter inch gaps between yeah. each of the planks. And you can sweep them ten times and get a dust pan full on the eleventh yeah. time. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much nicer. Yeah. And especially you can't really vacuum. No. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. We could run a really long extension cord. Oh. This bathroom looks like it's really been modernized. Yes. Yes, we just did this last year. I had to keep the window in the back, though. Yep. <laughs> window in the back, but that looks like a pretty comfortable shower. Yes. Gas lights, there simply is no electricity. Is that right? Correct. Mm. We have electricity in the lodge. We have mm. a solar power system mm-hmm. in the lodge, but it only powers the lodge in the house. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed a solar panel. Not too many people have done that yet, although they could. No, I love it that we don't have to listen to the generator. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Yeah, I can do laundry at 7 o'clock in the morning and not bother the guests. <laughs> <laughs> well, how big a stack of batteries do you have? A, uh, the- we're actually using eight batteries right now. Mm-hmm. There are six-volt batteries, and ooh, you're going to ask me the amp hours? And no, I I'm not, because I head. wouldn't know what the hell you were oh, talking good. about. <laughs> But yes, we have 12 panels and 8 batteries. Mm-hmm. We'll leave it at that. Okay. Well, from this vantage point, we're now up the hill, overlooking the lodge, overlooking the uh, pond. How do people book you? <laughs> the easiest way is by email. Mm-hmm. Talking about Wi-Fi a few minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Now, the easiest way is to go on the website, decide if Red River is the right place, mm-hmm. send me an email with a bunch of questions, and then send me an email asking if we have room. <laughs> I do have an availability calendar on the website, yeah. but sometimes I'm a little too busy to update it. <laughs> so 
you know. <laughs> yeah, I do know, unfortunately. <laughs> Especially if it's just mostly you and Gloria doing all the work here. It, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. She cooks things and I fix things. Mm-hmm. Dibouli. What does Dibouli mean? Did you trace down what that means? Uh, I finally just traced that down last year. Yeah. Um, I had always heard it was a French term for tumble down, mm-hmm. which I looked up the French for, term for tumble down and it was something else. <laughs> but I did find out through a good friend of mine that the French term debouli mm-hmm. is actually for, it actually stands for of the talus slope. Mm. And a talus slope is a, basically a rock pile that has fallen off the, the cliff of a mountain, mm-hmm. which is what this area is known for. Mm-hmm. We have a large rock slide over on Debouli Pond and we have a couple on Gardner. Okay. So it's the perfect name. Well, I would think part of the, the charm of being here is being in the Dibouli area. Yes. Uh, I mean, most certainly. Some of the other camps are on lovely ponds and all that, but mm-hmm. Dibouli has its own charm to it. It, it really does. They're actually, I've, I've heard talk that they want to sort of market as the Northern Baxter almost. Yeah. Which, which might, it kind of is. <laughs> it, it kind of is, yeah. but that might make it too popular. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there goes the flicker. I knew I heard one calling. Mm-hmm. Do people come here? To stay and for the sole purpose of going hiking? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep, we do have some folks who do that. Yeah. Yep. Because I, this is my first time to Dibouli. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons I want to come visit you is I've been looking at Dibouli on the, the Lorms Atlas for years saying, I have got to get up there. Yep. But through all my early radio career when I was doing remote broadcasts on weekends and parades and stuff like that, I could never, ever get mm-hmm. away. <laughs> And now that I'm self-unemployed <laughs> nice, <laughs> and doing stuff like this, oh, there goes the other flicker. Yep. Uh, I can we have find. hundreds of those around here. Yeah. What I'm really looking for while I'm up here, too, is uh, those rare woodpeckers, the blackback and American three-toed woodpecker, which mm. are in the area. There were those are specialists. <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't recognize them if I saw them. Yeah. You might say, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> I say that a lot, actually. <laughs> 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 Any funny stories about... Uh, Funny guest experiences you've had or wildlife experiences? Oh, we'll, boy. We'll start with guests. What's the dumbest thing anyone's ever done here? I don't know if I can say that on the radio. Because <laughs> somebody will recognize themselves in my story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Nobody's listening to this show. <laughs> uh, well, let's actually, let's start with wildlife. Okay. Because I've got a couple of those. We don't have a lot of bear in the area, mm-hmm. but we do take all of our food scraps mm-hmm. down back, maybe an eighth of a mile or so, um, and we dump them down back just for the animals. Mm-hmm. And... At one point, we had a lot of guests in, so we were putting a lot of food scraps down, and then we had a slow period right after that, so there weren't any food scraps down there. And Gloria came over to the kitchen one day, and at that point, we had a big screen door on our front um, on our front door, and that was completely mangled. <laughs> and she said, oh. And so she opened the screen door, heard the bear go out through the front window, uh, oh, <laughs> which, which luckily was open, so he just went through the screen. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> Well, I would think you probably wouldn't have as many bears some places because, this. Because, first of all, it's public reserve land, so mm-hmm. a lot of this hasn't been harvested in a long time. Correct. Uh, 1964 was the last time it was harvested yeah. that I know of. So anytime you get that kind of maturity in the woods, you don't get as many bears. Yep. We're seeing a lot this year, though. Mm-hmm. Yep. A lot of bear, a lot of bear sign. Well, there's more and more bear all the time. Yes. <laughs> yep. And every year we have uh, a moose that'll come down to the pond, mm-hmm. and, and she'll just graze, and you know, we'll hang out together. Yeah, but you say that like it's an annual thing, not a daily thing. They don't come in here that much? They, it used to be a daily thing. Mm-hmm. Um, we used to have a moose in there every few days. Mm. Uh, for the past year or two, we, we've hardly seen her. Mm. So I don't know what's going on with that. Well, once again, it probably comes down to the fact that woods have become more mature and there's less browse, and they're probably going elsewhere. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Or I could be talking through my hat again. <laughs> <laughs> I do see tracks in the garden every now and then, so they are around. Uh-huh. They're just not coming down to the pond for some reason. Do you have a fenced-in garden? Uh, it's not fenced in. So what goes in there to eat it? Everything. Every- <laughs> <laughs> well, I put this question earlier in the show to somebody else, and I, I said, um, when you've got a garden like that, what's your number one culprit? Is it deer, moose, hare? It was guests, wasn't it? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. It, it was deer in okay. this case. <laughs> he actually had a little more deer around that yeah. location than here. Yeah, no, we don't have a problem with deer. Actually, strangely enough, we don't get a lot of browse in the garden. Mm-hmm. Um, we're actually looking at a little blueberry patch that I put in this year, mm-hmm. and hardly any browse on that. Mm from rabbits or or anything. Mm. Let's walk back down the hill. (laughs) Sure. The hill we're talking about is the one where many of the cabins are built, overlooking Island Pond here at Red River Camps inside the Dibouli Public Reserve lands. We'll finish up the tour with Jen Brophy in a moment. Then you can go about the rest of your day while I head off to explore one of Maine's most remote and exotic public reserve lands. Red River Camps are located right in the middle, surrounded by some of the best fishing for brook trout and arctic char in Maine. Now this, I gotta see. 
This is Bob Duchesne's Wild Main on the radio station at Sports Radio 92.9 The Ticket. Welcome back to Bob Duchesne's Wild Main. We're at Red River Camps way up in Arista County, getting a tour from owner Jen Brophy, whose parents first bought these camps before her first birthday. The camps are located inside the Dabuli Public Reserve lands, which I'm going off to explore as soon as the show's over. How big is Dabuli Public Reserve land, do you know? Dabuli Public Reserve land is 21,000 acres, plus or minus. Mm-hmm. There are hills for climbing. Oh, yes. We've got three different mountains. We have Black Mountain, Dabuli Mountain, and Gardner Mountain. Mm-hmm. And they all have trails over them now. Mm-hmm. And lots and lots and lots of fishing. Yes. Oh, and it has the historic Dabuli Fire Tower. Oh. Okay. I should have mentioned that. Yes. Because since I'm not from here, <laughs> I didn't know you had a fire tower. We do. Well, I told you, I've never been to Dabuli up here. This is my first experience, and I'm way overdue. Yeah, I'll have to show you a picture of the original fire tower. Yeah. Back in 1919, before they put the steel structure up, they actually had a bosun's chair in a large tree. <laughs> And we have a picture of the fire warden's wife sitting in the bosun's chair in 1919. So and that's how they got up to the top of the tower? Was it? Oh, no, that was the tower. That was? Oh, okay. Yep. Really? Yep. And then in 1921, I have a picture of the, the original steel structure. Uh-huh. And then it was replaced in the 60s yeah. with the structure that's there now. Mm-hmm. Oh, when I, I was looking for this earlier, mm-hmm. um, and I didn't see it initially, but from this angle, I just see you do have lightning rods in your lodge. We do, but <laughs> in all honesty, the... The roof is metal, so I don't know what good they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also the historic school bell mm-hmm. um, that we turned into our dinner bell. That's one of the only two things that survived the lodge fire. Mm-hmm. So that is st- that's still the original bell. So do you summon people with the bell to dinner? We do. Oh, how cool. We use it for dinner and for emergencies. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now i got to ask, what oh. kind of emergency would call for ringing the bell? <laughs> We've never actually had to use it, but that's the plan. <laughs> You you can hear that on the top of the bully. Yeah. So do you tell guests three rings come running? I mean, what, what's the protocol for ringing the bell well, in an emergency? Well, if we're over on the island, yeah. the protocol is if you hear the bell ring, mm-hmm. come over. Mm-hmm. And if it's an emergency, the person does not stop ringing the bell until they you see you coming. <laughs> okay. So if it's just like a phone call, they'll ring it once. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it's if it's something bad. If it's ring, 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 yep. battle fast. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's just weird. <laughs> what's back over here? Uh, mostly outbuildings. Yep. What are we they? Have our, still active? Uh, not really. We have our generator shed, which mm-hmm. does still have a generator in it in case we need backup. We've got my workshop up there. Workshop uh, for what? What's in it? Uh, mostly woodworking tools, all mm-hmm. of the plumbing supplies, all the electrical supplies. Basically, anything that needs fixing mm-hmm. is housed up there. Do you do all that? The Most wo- of it. The, w- <laughs> the vast majority. <laughs> <laughs> so not just a civil engineer, but a carpenter and electrician. Uh, carpenter, electrician, gas maintenance person, plumbing person. Uh, Jen of all trades. Oh, uh, jeez. <laughs> You're making this sound like too much work. Oh, it's fun. I wouldn't, it? I wouldn't trade it for the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might not have the opportunity to trade it for the world. Well, that too. <laughs> You're in the woods. <laughs> so this building over here is what? Um, that's where we house the, the lawnmower and mm-hmm. the cans and bottles and, yeah. and general things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then that second one is where we house the generator. Mm-hmm. Um, and then down that little trail is where we put all of our scraps. Yep. Yep. And then down this road mm-hmm. is the rest of the township. Which I have not seen yet. You have to. No, I, I'm going yeah. to. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I didn't come up all the way to, to, to Just not see Just do one see interview and, yeah, and turn it. around. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, and then we have a, a big field back there, which is where I have my garden and our laundry line. Yeah. Um, we have pictures from the 20s, though, where that entire field was a garden. Mm-hmm. They, they literally used to have a big a, a, a subsistence garden Well, I was going to say, back when this was first established, um, when this was really a small village, mm-hmm. there would have been a lot of these trees missing. It, it would have been... Yes. Yeah. Yep. It would have looked a whole lot different because right now you are surrounded by mature forest, essentially. Basically. A lot of this yep. would be gone. Yes. Yeah. When people look at the old photos of these wild places, they realize, you know, that wasn't so wild at one time. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's a funny guest story for you. We have a lot of people who come in and, mm-hmm. and marvel at our the pristineness mm-hmm. of our pond and of our hardwood and, and things like that. And I, I, don't, I don't tell them how recently it was logged mm-hmm. or the fact that all of the rocks that they're looking at that they think are so pristine used to be a wall <laughs> that, <laughs> that literally extended from the little cabins over there over to the boathouse. <laughs> do you do any iced harvesting or anything like that? We don't. I think yeah. it, would, it would be fun. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, the first but time maybe. The then first it, time. Then it becomes work like everything else. Yep, that's my standard response to people who ask if I stay here in the winter as well. Mm-hmm. It would be wonderfully romantic mm-hmm. for about a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, reality would set in. Yeah. Well, do you snowmobile in here to check on it a few times during the winter? We do, yeah. most certainly. Mm-hmm. Yep, just to check and make sure that you know there's not too much snow on the roofs, yeah. mm-hmm. see how everything's holding up. Yeah, because you don't have metal roofs, so how much of this has to be cleared off? Uh, we clear all the cabins about once a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. A lot of them are high enough on the hill that the, the wind takes it, mm-hmm. so it's not too big of an issue, but especially Gardner, the one over in the corner, uh, that, gets, <laughs> that gets piled on. Got a shovel now and then. Oh, yes. That's got to suck. It it's not fun. No, because I've had to do it. <laughs> All right, let's step back inside. All right. And you can repeat for me once again. How does everybody get a hold of you? What's the website? The website is www.redrivercamps.com. That is the easiest way to find us. Our phone number is two zero seven four three five six thousand. So it's fairly easy to remember. But really, the website gives so much more information than mm-hmm. I can give over the phone. That's probably the best. <laughs> In that case, I'm going to go see the rest of Dabuli and thank you, Jen Brophy, for being on Bob Duchesne's Wild Maine. Thank you, Bob. And that's it for Red River Camps in Dabuli. Bob Duchesne's Wild Maine is brought to you by Hammond Lumber, Dice Arts, EBS, and Supercuts in Bangor, Brewer, and Old Town. Join me again every Saturday at 9, Sunday at 8 on Sports Radio 92.9 The Ticket.